When it comes to different longevity supplements, then we don't really have a ton of evidence showing that they work in humans. Some of them have very good results in mice or in other animals, but when it comes to humans, then the evidence is somewhat limited. So in this video, I've decided to outline the supplements that have been shown to have some longevity effects in humans. And the term longevity could be very broad, like just improving your muscle strength and increasing your VO2 max could be considered like a longevity supplement based on some metrics. But this is not what we're going to talk about. We're going to mostly talk about increasing life expectancy, reducing mortality, or improving hallmarks of aging. It's showtime. So the first supplement on the list is certainly the most powerful one, which is going to be metformin. Now, metformin is obviously a diabetic drug, and it has a long track record of improving life expectancy in patients with diabetes. Metformin improves the complications in diabetes, it helps to alleviate the symptoms of diabetes, and it reduces the risk of cancer in diabetes. If you have diabetes, then metformin will certainly increase your life expectancy and reduce your mortality risk. But when it comes to non-diabetics, then the effects on life expectancy expectancy are somewhat more conflicting. Yes, there is some studies finding that patients taking metformin, even if they have diabetes, live longer than non-diabetics not taking metformin. Of course, that study has a lot of flaws and it's actually not true. Non-diabetics not taking metformin will still live longer generally than diabetics taking metformin. But it doesn't refute the fact that metformin does increase life expectancy in diabetics. When it comes to non-diabetics, these longevity hackers taking metformin off-label to improve the longevity, then we don't have any good evidence to suggest that it would increase your life expectancy if you don't have diabetes. Regardless, metformin is on the list because it does have some actual track record of improving life expectancy and reducing mortality in humans. The next supplement combo on the list is going to be glycine and NAC because we have at least a dozen human clinical trials. So these are better than like these epidemiology studies that clinical trials showing that supplementing glycine and NAC reduces the hallmarks of aging and improves functional outcomes related to aging in the elderly people. So glycine and NAC, what it does is that it increases your glutathione levels. In so doing, you also improve many outcomes of aging, like muscle strength, gait speed, just better metabolic profile, and lower inflammation levels, better antioxidant effects, etc. Glycine supplementation in animals does increase their lifespan as well. When it comes to humans, and obviously we don't have any studies extending lifespan, but because the criteria is reversing or reducing some of the hallmarks of aging, which is quite crucial for like determining human health span, then uh, yes, the glycine and NAC combo is most is one of the most rigor, rigorous uh, supplement combos in terms of showing that yes, it does reduce human hallmarks of aging. We have you know dozens of studies actually already showing in different clinical trials showing those effects. Nice. The next supplement on the list is going to be vitamin D and uh, there is actually quite a lot of studies also between vitamin D supplementation and reduced mortality in human adults. So this systematic review actually included 159 randomized clinical trials, which is a good you know, starting point. And they did find that vitamin D3 seemed to decrease mortality in the elderly people living independently or in institutional care. And this is not the only one. We have another 2014 meta-analysis on vitamin D and mortality showing that your vitamin D levels are strong, like a predictor of overall mortality. The association between vitamin D3 levels and all cause and cause specific mortality was remarkably consistent and when it comes to overall health and longevity then the lowest risk for at least prostate cancer and such appears to be with an optimal serum concentration of 40 to 60 nanomoles per liter for the lowest cancer risk so it's a u-shaped curve with vitamin d levels if your vitamin d levels are very low then that increases risk of cancer and overall mortality but if your vitamin d levels are also super high above normal then that also actually is associated with increased mortality so vitamin d supplementation use if it raises your vitamin d levels back to normal range then that will have a positive effect on reducing your mortality risk if your vitamin d levels are already naturally in the normal range and you take a supplement and it puts you into the excess range above the normal baseline then that could actually be harmful in a lot of ways but the key message here is that you want to maintain optimal normal vitamin d levels somewhere between 40 to 60 nanomoles per liter whether or not you should take a vitamin d supplement is up to debate like i said it depends on your vitamin d levels if your vitamin d levels are low then obviously you want to make sure that you get adequate amount of sunlight but that's not possible always in certain regions of the world and if you are in a region of the world where there's less sunlight or if it's winter time then yes supplementing vitamin D is a positive thing. It's just that you don't want to take vitamin D if your blood vitamin D levels 
are already normal or they're above the reference range. Another interesting compound or a nutrient we have to mention here is vitamin K. So dietary intake of vitamin K is inversely associated with mortality risk. So the better dietary K intake then the lower your mortality risk generally is. Of course, you could say that healthy foods in general have vitamin K, which is true. Healthy foods, especially different kinds of leafy greens, as well as vitamin K2 foods like egg yolks, liver, and natto, which is the highest source of vitamin K2, are generally healthy foods. But vitamin K2 in the context of vitamin D3 is actually very relevant because vitamin K2 enables you to pretty much utilize the vitamin D much better and also store it in your bones rather than keep it in the bloodstream where it could become calcified. And again, we find that dietary intake of vitamin K is associated with reduced cardiovascular disease, cancer, and mortality. So it's, you know, we have the evidence for vitamin K from diet sources. We don't have any evidence that supplemental vitamin K is associated with reduced mortality or reduced heart disease or anything like that, but mechanistically it does benefit those conditions. I would certainly focus on the dietary sources of vitamin K, both K1 and K2, but supplementing vitamin K2 is also very safe and there's really no downside to it. The next supplement on the list is glucosamine, which is another interesting supplement because use of glucosamine is associated with reduced cardiovascular disease and reduced mortality. In a 2020 US study, they said that after controlling for age, glucosamine use was associated with a 39% reduction in all cause and 65% reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality, which is uh, very significant, like a 30, 39% reduction in your all cause mortality and 65% reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality is a massive. Now it is true that uh, glucosamine use might have some healthy user bias. It's kind of considered like a health supplement that the elderly take for their joints, but it does have anti-inflammatory and autophagic effects as well. So it is, you know, it has longevity mechanisms. Of course, this evidence is somewhat limited. I wouldn't put it into the highest quality of evidence, but it's still a pretty good like, you know, reason to take glucosamine, in my opinion. Like everyone would benefit from glucosamine for their joint health. Like if you start early, then you will avoid a lot of the issues with uh, joints and uh, knee pain and those kind of things in your later years. And as a bonus, it apparently has also some, you know, benefits for all-cause mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality. Of course, everyone could pretty much take glycine, NAC, vitamin D. These supplements are very safe. They have a long track record of safety and they have little to no side effects. When it comes to metformin and rapamycin, then obviously you can't just buy it from a pharmacy or something. You need a generally like a prescription from a doctor or you buy it off label. I don't recommend doing that. Obviously you would need to consult your doctor whether or not these drugs would suit you. But do you want to slow an engine and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.